on my front porch friend. Well, I'm not at home today, as you can see. I'm actually in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, my husband is from Chattanooga, and so we have a small condo that we come to here whenever we've come in to visit his family or our ministry base. We also have a ministry base right here in Chattanooga called uh, Ramp Church Chattanooga. So we, we come here for uh, some time just to work in the ministry. So I'm here today instead of being able to be beside the creek, which is, you know me, this is where I love to be. But isn't this a beautiful spot? Look at this view. I love that bridge right over there. It's just such a pretty, Chattanooga is just a beautiful city anyway, isn't it? Over there is Lookout Mountain. You can sort of see it. It's kind of a foggy day, but you can sort of see it peeking out over the trees. Anyway, God just has a beautiful world, doesn't he? But anyway, I, even though I wasn't home, I was not going to miss the opportunity to come and encourage you with a word that I heard today as I was praying for you. And uh, I, I believe that this word is just going to be a word to uh, strengthen your faith, especially for women. I was reading some of the comments today for women like Kim, who's believing for two prodigals. And uh, today she's been struggling and she was sharing that in her comments today about she has been discouraged and, and just feeling down and, and low today. And I believe this is your word, Kim. And I read today about a, a lady named Wilma. She's also one of our front porch friends. And Wilma's been fighting cancer for the last two years. And But she said in her comments, she's just continuing to preach, continuing to go forward in faith, even though she's you know been through a lot. She's been on chemo and so many things. But her faith was still strong as I was reading her comment. It just blessed me as so many of your comments bless me as I read about your faith and the stand that you are taking. But it also helps me and it helps all of us, these front porch intercessors, it helps all of us to know how to pray for you as you're commenting. So just thank you for doing that. But I want to get right to the word that the Lord gave me to give you. It's found, it's a familiar passage again, but I want you to hear it today with fresh ears and hear it in your spirit. It's found in Ephesians, the third chapter, 20th and 21st verses, Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. It says this. Oh, it's just loaded. It's so good. It says, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Listen to the last part. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Oh, that's just so powerful. I, that, I was quoting that actually from the King James Version, but all the versions are good. Even from the very beginning of the verse, there's life on it for you. For those of you struggling today to keep standing and believing, the Lord just swoops in with this promise for you. Oh, it's like he just came today with joy and with hope. Listen to the first word of that promise, now. In other words, this promise is not just for someday, way, way off, oh, someday in heaven, oh, someday he's going to do soup exceeding abundantly above, someday. Well, he is going to do that someday, but the word starts with now, right now, today, this moment. God lives in the now. He lives in now. He is not just trapped in time like you and me. Our God is a now God. Just say it out loud. Go with me, say now. Just say it again, now. Right now, this is your day of deliverance today. Now, unto him who is able. I love that part. Our God is able. He's able to bring your prodigal home. He is able to meet the financial need. Wilma, he's able to heal and strengthen your body and every one of you believing for healing in your body. Now, right now, he is able 
to heal your marriage, to show you what to do about your family situation. Now he is able to provide the way to buy the house, to make a way for the job, the land, everything that's on. right now. God is able right now. God is able. God is able. The doctor may not be able. Your best friend may not be able. Your mother may not be able. Come on. There's a lot of things that, that, that in the natural is just not able. Can't do it. It's impossible. But our God, he knows what to do. Now unto him who is able. You know, when you hear bad news, even this week, maybe maybe some of you have heard some just bad news. I want to encourage you, this needs to be your response. My God is able. He's able. If you get a phone call from your prodigal son or just word from, from a financial situation, just say, just respond to it like this. My God is able. My God is able. Doctors report, they call you in and give you a hopeless scenario, just look at them and say, my God is able. You know what? It goes on. It doesn't just stop there. He's telling you today, he's not just able to meet your need and that just be good enough and that's pretty good. I mean, I know how to ask for some pretty good stuff and you do too. He didn't say just stop there. He said, now unto him who is able, let's go overboard now to do exceeding, abundantly, above what you can ask or think. <laughs> I can think about a lot of stuff. My imagination can go there. God says I can do more. Why should you just settle for just simply what you're asking for when God's giving you permission? He's giving you permission to ask for more. Why? Because there's no limit to his goodness. There's no limit to his ability. He is wanting you to ask for more. Why should you just ask for plain old vanilla when you can ask for nutty buddy almond crisp mocha chocolate chip? Come on. God wants to do greater than you can even imagine. Greater than what you're asking for. You know, I think about this for my own life. I wanna, I'm saying this to encourage those of you, even especially those of you believing for the return of prodigal children. I remember when Lindsay was gone, and I remember days feeling just like some of you, especially like you, Kim, just feeling days that are just so hurtful. Just the pain is so awful. Things they say, things they do. And, and some of you, you just never dreamed you'd be dealing with this with a prodigal child. And on those days, it's just like, you just feel so overwhelmed. But you know what? I learned what can happen when you do not let go of the promise of God and you keep contending and you keep praying no matter what it looks like. You're just not going to stop. You're just not going to stop. It doesn't mean you don't have down days. It doesn't mean you don't cry sometimes hard. It doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. It hurts and you keep praying, but you just don't give up. And when you will not give up, and when you keep standing on the promise of God, you open up that realm that is exceeding abundantly above. Because now then, after years of praying and standing for my daughter, I was thinking today, I'm four years away from her com coming back home. She came home four years ago. And now I just think about what's happened in these four years. You know what's happened? Exceeding abundantly above what I was asking. I was asking God to just bring Lindsay home to God. Bring her back to her family. Bring her back to her ministry. God did every single bit of that. Wait. Let it go. Let it go. Sometimes the enemy just wants to come in. We ain't going to let him bother us. We're just going to let him get by. Go on by. Go on by. He's going. You know what God did? Oh, he didn't just bring Lindsay home. No. You know what he did? He gave her a child. He restored her faith. And now he's using her testimony to reach thousands of people around the world with hope. I never dreamed when I was going through that. I never dreamed when I was writing those entries in my journal, entries of just struggle, 
that I would ever be writing them in a book that many of you would read and find faith and encouragement by. I never dreamed on the days that I was struggling and down and hurting. I never, I never, I never dreamed I'd be standing here with you right now, holding this little phone in my hand and able to look at you in the spirit, face to face, heart to heart, and me tell you not to give up. Oh, no, God didn't just answer my prayer. He did exceeding abundantly above, beyond anything I ever imagined, and he's still doing it, and he's not gonna stop till Jesus comes. He's gonna do that for you, my friend. He's gonna do that for you, not just meet your financial need, no, he wants to do it in such a way that you stand there with your mouth open and your family stands there going, you know what? Only God did that. God wants to answer your prayer in such a way. He wants to heal your body in such a way that even the doctors stand there going, well, there's a God. Come on, don't, don't give up. Be encouraged today. You say, Karen, how do I do that? I'll tell you how. He says it. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above. All we can ask or think, watch, according to the power that works in us. That's how we do it. It's not by might or flesh. Oh, no. We don't have to stand in our own strength. It's too weak. It's according to the power that works in us. He didn't say, according to the, to the worry that's working in you. Mm -mm. He didn't say, according to the doubt that's working in you. Nope. He didn't say according to the fear that's working. No, none of those things are what moves the mountain. Fear, doubt, worry, all of those things are something that will delay the promise. No, get them out fast as you can get them out. According to the power that works in us. What is that power? Oh, I'm glad you asked. It's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. That's the power that's working in you. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. When you've asked Jesus into your heart, you've received the power of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. That's the same spirit that raised the dead. It's that power in you that's going to raise your prodigal son from the dead, from going to raise your spiritually dead daughter from, the, from a grave that the enemies had her in. That's the power that's working in you. He's going to awaken your husband out of spiritual death. That's the power that's working in you. That's the power that does exceeding abundantly above. I love the last part. He says this. He says, now. Unto him that is able, be glory. Be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout the ages. I love this part, world without end. In other words, how are you going to receive this? How are you going to receive that exceeding abundantly above promise? I'll tell you how. The power that's in you, but also by giving him glory. By giving him worship and praise. That's what faith is. Faith just praises him before you see it. Faith just says, I don't feel like it, but I'm going to get up off this couch right now. And my flesh doesn't want to, wants to sit here and pout and have a pity party. I'm not going to listen to my flesh. I'm getting up off this couch. I'm getting up out of this bed. I'm going to stay. I'm going to make, I'm going to make this bedroom like the walls of Jericho. I'm going to march around them. I'm going to walk around them. Come on, you just get up and start marching and walking, declaring the word of God, declaring the promises of God. You're going to say right now, I'm not going to let depression grip me. I'm not going to let fear take over me. I'm not going to be moved by what I've heard today. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to bless him in spite of the circumstances I'm looking at or what my body feels like. You know something? Did you know Ephesians 3, 20 and 21 was written by the Apostle Paul while he was sitting on the floor of a Roman prison? Listen, Paul didn't write those verses right after a great victory and sitting there, you know, on some retreat. No, no. Paul wrote those words sitting in the middle of a Roman prison. Sitting in a situation and circumstance that looked completely opposite of what he just wrote. I guess Paul was thinking, God, I know you're able to deliver me from this prison. But you know what? It's like the, the Hebrew children. If he does not, I'm going to praise him anyway. 
I'm, you know what? How does a man like Paul write those words in circumstances like that? Because he has learned what trusting God is. Trusting God says, God, I believe that even when I'm yet to see the fulfillment of my promise, you are still good and you love me. I trust that. When I don't understand your ways or the circumstance I'm in, I trust that you are good and you love me. I'm just going to believe that. And you're going to take this circumstance and you're going to work it for good in my life. Not just a little bit, but wild, crazy, overboard, exceeding abundantly. One more thing I'm going to tell you. I was reading this this afternoon in the book of Acts, I believe it's the 16th chapter, and um, somewhere about the 22nd verse, I think it is. Paul, he's such an amazing man, I can't wait to meet him. Paul the apostle had been preaching the gospel with his friend Silas, and they'd been doing the will of God. They were out preaching the gospel. They were doing what God had called them to do. And the enemy gets upset about it and stirs up a riot, stirs up people to come against them. And the Bible says that they were that, that they were ordered to be stripped and beaten with rods, severely beaten, put in stocks, and kept in the prison. And I love this. Here's two men. You, of course, you got the man that's already he, he's written Ephesians three. He already knows God's able. But they're sitting there in stocks with their backs ripped open. Now you talk about a tough day. They had every reason to sit there and question even the existence of God. Why would a good God let this happen to me? Why would God, if God is real and we're out here doing His will and I'm out here proclaiming His word and I'm, I'm preaching His gospel and why did He let this happen? Here I am in stocks and my back's ripped open. I'm in pain. I'm suffering. Oh no, that's not what He did. They didn't sit there having a pity party. The Bible says about midnight. Oh, thank you, Lord. About midnight, they begin to sing and give worship. Praise to the Lord. How do you do that? Because God, in, this, in spite of what I feel or what I see and even what I understand, I trust that you're good. I trust that you're God. And you deserve to be worshiped. You deserve it when I feel it and when I don't. You deserve it when I understand it, when I do not understand. You deserve to be worshipped. And the Bible says that they begin to sing and give God praise. <laughs> and all of a sudden, God, God, you talk about God's heart got overwhelmed. God's heart was so moved by their worship that the foundations of the prison begin to shake. Oh, that was no accident. That was the heart of God being moved. God begins to shake that prison. And what happens? An exceeding abundantly above miracle. The stocks were broken off of them. And not just for them. Here's the overboard part. It was for every prisoner in the room. And it didn't stop there. It gave an opportunity for Paul to preach until the jailer himself was saved and his whole house. And it didn't stop there. 2,000 years later, we are still talking about that night that Paul and Silas worshipped instead of pouted. Worshipped instead of doubted. Come on, that is the God Paul was writing about when he said he's able to do exceeding abundantly above. Oh, Paul, he did all right. He took your worship. And for 2,000 years, we've been talking about that night you praised God. When I was praying for you today, I heard the Lord tell me, I heard the Lord tell me to tell you this. He said, tell them, I've heard their prayers. I've seen their worship and received it. I heard the Lord tell me to tell you, I've seen your tears. Then I heard this little song being sung over you. And it was this, late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. 
And it, just that little phrase over and over and over. Because late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around and around and around. He's going to turn this thing around. I know it feels like midnight. I know you feel like you are trapped like Paul did in the stocks. I know you've been hurt till you feel like your own heart's been ripped open. But honey, you've got good company. Just begin to sing and worship. And the Lord told me to tell you this, one more promise. Oh, my sweet friend, I hear this over you right now. It's found in Psalms 30. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. And my sweet friend, for you, I see the sun rising. Lord, strengthen my friend tonight. Right now, the one with tears streaming down her face listening to this. God, give her strength. Give her hope. Give her encouragement that her prodigal is coming home because you've heard the prayers. Lord, give her strength that healing is hers because you paid the price for it with the stripes on your back. Give her faith to stand for a marriage that seems broken and impossible and a husband that himself is a prodigal. God, awaken his heart to truth. Lord, strengthen my friend that has to have a financial miracle today or she doesn't know what they're going to do. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that again, you'll make a way out of no way. Lord, I pray for those that just have felt down today that they will be lifted up. They will be standing up. Watch this. I hear this from the Lord. And he's going to turn your mourning into dancing. Go read Psalms 30, the whole chapter tonight. Over and over. Read the whole chapter. It's yours. I hear that. Go read it. It's yours. The whole chapter. He's going to turn for you your mourning into dancing. Can I say it again, honey? He's going to turn for you your mourning into dancing. Why don't you just start dancing right now? Who, you don't have to have music. Dancing comes out of the music of the heart. Start, start dancing. Come on. I'm going to do it with you right now. In the name of Jesus, just start dancing. Just start worshiping all over that place where you are. Dance all over your living room. Dance all over the bedroom. Get up where you are and just start. If you're driving down the road, just start moving your feet. Come on. In Jesus' name, he's turning your morning into dancing. He's turning your morning into dancing. In Jesus' name. I love you, my friend. Comment below. And let me hear what God is saying to you right now. And let us all know your prayer needs. In Jesus' name. All right. I will see you again next week. Until then, keep your eyes on the one who is able.